What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea, and welcome to nothing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Welcome to one of the 2022 year end videos. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about my top five parentheses and also some honorable mentions uh top five most used inks not necessarily my favorite inks although to be fair it's pretty much the same but top five most used inks of 2022 now i'm gonna get the most obvious out of the way <laughs> just get it out of the way because everyone knows that watches my channel regularly that this is my favorite ink of all time. Just is, probably won't change, although the next one is probably gonna take its place, but who knows? Anyways, Mont Blanc, James Purdy and Sons Single Malt. Uh, I purchased this ink a couple years ago when it came out. It is no longer available to buy. Um, I'm almost done an entire bottle of this ink. Uh, and I do have another bottle um, waiting. Uh, so when I do like actually finish this bottle, uh, I do have another one in reserve. The reason why I love this ink is, well, obviously I love the color. I love the fact that it is a great shader. Uh, it cleans out pretty nicely out of all my pens and it smells amazing. It literally does smell like whiskey. Uh, and while I don't really drink whiskey. In fact, I don't drink at all. Um, I do enjoy the scent of it. Uh, so that is for sure my number one favorite, um, favorite most used. It doesn't matter what pen, although I tend to put it into um, my Pilot Custom 823. Uh, I tend to pair it with this the most, but it's not always a uh, necessity to do that. So that is one of them. And I just like the box. I don't keep most of the boxes for my inks, but I happen to have that one. And I do also happen to have the next one in a box, as you can probably hear. Um, and this is the ink that, guys, I'm telling you, is so similar to Mont Blanc, James Purdy and Son Single Malt, and is very likely gonna take its place. I'm not even lying. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, it's also an exclusive. You can still buy this, although it is a Canadian company and shipping to anywhere outside of Canada is expensive. But this is probably going to be my new favorite. It is called Ginger Chicken. It is an exclusive from Wonder Pens in Toronto. Uh, and the company that makes it is Dominant Industry. Uh, these are cool. They come with a little dropper. Uh, I've never used them. And inside the box, the ink bottle is inside a little pouch, uh, which is kind of cool. My only beef with this is that it is a very small bottle. This is only a 25 milliliter bottle, uh, and that's a little annoying. <laughs> I want 50 mils. Normally I'm cool if it's like a smaller amount, but because I love this ink so much, I'm kind of annoyed and, <laughs> and I kind of want 50 mils. Uh, so I will very likely be purchasing another bottle. Um, I have not used this one as much as James Purdy and Sons because this one only came out this year. Uh, and I debated actually being like putting it on this list because it is a newer ink. Um, I've only had this now for a little over a month since the end of October. Uh, well, I guess it'd be, yeah, a little, a month and a half, a little over, but I have used it daily daily since I purchased it. Uh, right now, actually, it's in my Visconti Homo Sapiens Arizona Sunset. Uh, and it's also in, what other pen do I have? Oh no, I did clean that one out. I had it in two different pens. Um, and I, I, I truly don't think that I will ever not have this ink inked up. I like it that much. It's a little bit more saturated than Mont Blanc's, uh, so I do enjoy that. Now, those two colors were pretty similar to each other. And the third on the list of my most used inks deviates slightly, but is still in the brown family. And that is KWZ Ink Honey. 
I love this ink for a couple of reasons. One, it was the first ink that was actually gifted to me uh, by somebody I used to be pen pals with. Um, I don't do pen pals anymore. It was just too much to keep up with, um, so please don't ask. <laughs> I would love to still be pen pals, but it, it's just, it's a lot. Um, but so this is the first ink that was gifted to me. Uh, I love, love, love the vanilla scent uh, of this. This is the original before they even reformulated, um, but I adore the scent. I've used about half of the bottle. Uh, it's a very large bottle. It's a 60 milliliter bottle. Uh, so if you think about it that way, I have used an entire amount of one of these plus some. Um, so it's a 60 mil bottle. I've used about half of it. Um, I really, really, really like this ink actually in my, I didn't plan on showing you guys pens, but <laughs> I can't help it. Uh, I really like it in my Bennu Euphoria bourbon. Um, it just goes really well uh, and it writes phenomenally. This is a bit of a, a wetter writer. Uh, so it shows off the shading of this ink really, really nicely. Uh, and between the scent and the um, shading, I really, really like it. It does stick a little bit while cleaning. It's not as easy to clean out as the ginger chicken and the um, James Purdy and Sons, but because I typically keep it in this pen, which I have inked up quite a bit. Um, I don't really mind and I don't have to clean it out too, too hard. Uh, if I am gonna put it into a pen that I want something else in, uh, then I do have to spend a little bit more time getting that ink out. Um, but I think that's because it's the older formula. I'm pretty sure the newer formula doesn't do that as much, but sound out in the comments down below uh, if you've used a recent bottle of KWZ Honey uh, and what it cleans out like. Now the next two colors in the top five before we get to honorable mentions deviate from my browns quite exclusively. Uh, I do tend to fall in the warm brown category. I very much love that. Uh, but this one is definitely a cool colored ink. And you can tell just by looking at the top of the bottle. <laughs> and that is Pilot Yoroshizuku Sukiyo. This is my favorite Yoroshizuku ink. Uh, while I love some others, I have a Sakushi, I have a Shinkai, um, I have used an entire bottle worth of Kanpeki and Yamabudo before. Um, I don't currently have bottles of them, but I do have the Sakushi and Shinkai. Um, this one just seems to be my favorite. Uh, I very, very, very much like putting it into... Oh, I have this inked up already. Uh, I very much enjoy putting it in my um, Pilot Custom 912 Falcon nib uh, because it's super wet with this ebonite feed. Um, and so the color just like flows and gushes onto the page. Right now I have a Troublemaker Petrichor in here. Um, so it is inked up with something else right now. Um, but I mean, I'll put it in, I put this in everything. <laughs> Uh, I really like the color. It is definitely a blue uh, with a ever so slight tint of uh, black and teal. So technically it is a blue black, but it, there's not much black in it. Uh, it does sheen if you put it in a super gusher, but most pens you won't really see the sheen unless you're on Tomoe River. Um, very easy to clean out, great shader, behaves beautifully, um, and I absolutely love it. So. Sukiyo. Bam. All right. And the last one in the top five is whoopium, Diamine Writer's Blood, which I also love in my Pilot Custom 912. Like I said, that pen is never uninked pretty much. Uh, and I really like this one in it. Um, I've used it to about here. I really like this ink quite a bit. Um, it's an 80 mil bottle. It's going to last me forever. Um, but if they ever stop making it, I will buy another one. I really like the deep rich saturation. It's almost like a deep purple red. Um, it does shade really nicely if you have it in a in a dryer writing ink. What I love about this is depending on the pen that you put it in, it actually changes its color pretty dramatically. Uh, and I like that really quite a bit. It is a little bit difficult to clean out because it is a member of the red family, um, but it's not impossible. It doesn't stain. It just takes a few extra flushes. 
Uh, and it does sheen gold if you lay it on super, super, super thick, <laughs> which most people won't see, but I adore this ink. My two honorable mentions. <laughs> One honorable mention uh, I chose because I love this ink. I use it all the time, but I tend to only use it around Christmas. Uh, so really November, December is all I tend to use it for. So technically I broke the law with this one because this is what I use only really since the end of October, but I know that I'm gonna continue to use this throughout the year. So I cheated a little with this one, uh, but that's how much I like it. This one, I really, for whatever reason, tend to, oh, I forgot to turn my light. Sorry, guys. Uh, where is it here? I guess it doesn't really matter. But I really only use this one in November, December, uh, but I adore it. I don't know why I only do November, December, but I just flippin' love it. Uh, and it's permanently inked in November and December. Uh, in fact, it is currently in my Pilot Caveco. Uh, Pilot Caveco, oh my goodness, what is that? I was looking at the Pilot next to it. Caveco Sport. Uh, so it's permanently inked in November and December, which is why it's an honorable mention, because for whatever reason, for the other 10 months of the year, I don't tend to use it. But it is absolutely a stunner of an ink, and I 10 out of 10 recommend you pick it up. Uh, can be somewhat challenging sometimes to clean out, uh, but again, I'm not worried about it. And then the last honorable mention uh, is a Noodler's ink. Uh, and the reason why this is an honorable mention uh, is because I just couldn't bring myself to put another orange uh, on, on the list of my most used inks when I already have two. I mean, KWZ Honey is, is kind of more brown than orange, but I just couldn't. Uh, and to be fair, I haven't had this bottle very long, um, but I did go through multiple samples of this uh, before I even cracked open the bottle. Now I do want to say the depiction of it is now different. <laughs> so this used to be called uh, Kiowa. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, it is now just called Noodler's Pecan, uh, and that's it. Noodler's Pecan, uh, and I'm 99.9% .9 certain that it is now has a different label as well. Uh, Noodler's did a rebrand of many of their inks, um, but the color remains the same. Uh, the reason why I really like this one, uh, I like Noodler's bottles to be fair, because they're super full, which is why I, I put this one down when I was doing the swab, because um, it's super, super full. I've probably used now like enough to, to be like down to, to here um, out of all the samples, but I haven't done that to the actual bottle yet. Uh, oh, I got some ink all over my fingers. Uh, so I, I had to be very careful with the bottle, um, but I really, really like this one. It shades really well. Uh, it is an honorable mention, because like I said, I haven't had it too long and I couldn't bring another orange. But it's also a cooler orange. It's more of a vibrant orange um, versus the others. Um, and now, just as we wrap up, I will bring in these colors one more time now that the swabs have dried. Uh, just so you guys can kind of see the difference between fresh and wet and not so much. The Noodler's Pecan is still slightly, slightly wet. <laughs> you can see there. Um, but this is Tomoe River Paper. As uh, so you can see, Diamine Polar Glow, tons and tons and tons of sheen. Uh, Pilot Iroshizuku Sukiyo has some red sheen, and so does that Diamine Rider's Blood has some gold sheen. Uh, so like I said, if you lay these on super, super thick, like in these swabs, you will see it. But if you notice in the sections that aren't so thick, you don't. So it's pretty rare that you'll see the sheen there. It is not rare that you'll see this one. Um, but if you do put it in like maybe a dip pen uh, or something like that, you'll certainly see it. And then my main warm browns. <laughs> so this is what I mean by like, these are pretty close together. Uh, this one's just a little bit more saturated than the James Purdy and Sons. Um, right now I use them fairly interchangeably, but I have a feeling, I, d I don't know, but I have a feeling it might 
next year knock this one out of my number one spot. I'm not sure, but I, w I would say it, it, it could be done. It could be done, my friends. <laughs> so that is my top five and two honorable mentions for 2022. Let me know in the comment section down below what your top five are. It doesn't have to be a top five, really just your favorites. Uh, let me know what your most used inks are. Um, if you like this video, hit that like button. While you're down there, you might as well hit subscribe. I mean, come on, my content is gold. <laughs> Uh, ordinarily, content is every Monday and Friday and the occasional Tuesday for the month of December. It's going to be every Monday through Friday. Uh, if you would be so amazing to check out the description, uh, you'll find a link to my Patreon account. If you want to help support me and what I do on this channel, uh, please take a look there. Uh, it would mean a ton of, you know, of, of, of just warm and fuzzies to me. But as always, I love your faces and I'll see you next time. Bye. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. Just kidding. That's the beginning. <laughs> it is time for our Patreon crew shout out. Uh, this was filmed as of December 1st. So if you don't see your name, don't fret. I will update it as soon as I possibly can. My two ultimate humans, Daniel Rodney and Comp Dave, and all my VIPs, Susan, McCall Bennett Lawrence, Karen Epstein, Gretchen Peters, Carol Lowry, Michael Simon, Subi Wan Kenobi, Catherine Molina, Waylay Chang, Brian Law, Bill Pemberton, Lucas Bell, Robert Myers, Marissa Calvo, Eric Lineman, Stephen Baldwin, DigitalTent.Tech, Bobby A. Bailey, Bass, Joan Worthman, Luna Wolf Games, Aaron C., and Glenn Kelly. You guys make it super, super, super possible for me to keep making these videos. No matter what tier you're in, I thank you for supporting me on Patreon, especially those of you who've been with me since the beginning. You mean more to me than you could possibly ever know. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!